Previously in the day, Mike had told me about the easier subjects to talk about. He had talked about the inspiration for his writing. He had talked about his previous life, his origins before Austin. But now he wanted to take me deeper into his world. He wanted to take me to a place he fondly called the Bat Cave. This is a place where bats would often fly in the summertime from bridge to bridge. Much like the bats, creatures of the night that we don't often see, that often scare us, the street people would come here as well. This is a place that most outsiders did not see. It's a place hidden in plain sight. And much like the bats, the street people lived here right underneath our feet, behind the alleyways, in broad daylight. Here is a place that Mike showed me with great fondness, but it also was foretelling of what was about to happen. Mike, for all his creativity, for all the beauty in his soul, is also an artist, and many artists have demons, and those demons were about to show themselves. Oh, and I have the flashlight app on my motherfucking phone. Check me out, yo. <laughs> this ain't no shit right here. This is a uh, fucking high quality, uh, high quality film situation right here. Check me out. Oh. Flashlight app, bam. <laughs> Home bum detritus. <laughs> what was this guy thinking? You know, this is like when you're when you're a street person, you're like a crime scene investigator. You know, I'm serious. Finding drugs on the ground is like you're reconstructing a crime street scene. Like, what did this guy do here? Like, what drugs was this guy on? <laughs> Ever smoked this weed? Uh, was a woman. You can tell. Anyway, this shit, you can't smell it on camera, but it's like super fucking dank, man. Like, way danker than it looks. Like, you smoke a lot of dank weed, you know, that you think is pretty good. The shit I found today is like, it's like hash, almost. Hash with like, some plant matter in it. <laughs> it was starting to get late in the day. Mike and I decided to take a break from walking around the city and sit and have a few drinks of wine. Before long, we noticed that it started to rain. The underground tunnel under the bridge started to fill up with water. We noted this, and we both decided to capture it on film and in picture. I noticed that Mike's dark silhouette against the bright world mirrored the world below us, the world that we choose not to acknowledge. This was Mike's world, a world of darkness, a world of intrigue, but a world of also pain. Mike had lost his cell phone. I tried to assure him that it would be okay. However, he reacted in fury. He cried out, I am doomed. I am doomed. I didn't want to capture this on film because I felt that it was exploitative. I felt that capturing every moment of a human being is necessary to a certain extent, but I wanted to have respect for my subject. Mike grew despondent. He sat against the wall, muttering, I am doomed. I am doomed. I tried to help with encouragement. But eventually the drugs and alcohol incapacitated him. He passed out. Several attempts to revive him had failed. When I did wake him up, he seemed volatile, so I was loath to try harder. After two hours, I decided to leave and walk back into the city. Mike was left alone. This is Mike's world. He writes about the realities that we choose to often ignore. He 
writes about the people that society has forgotten.